Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to the next tutorial for the Fly-by-Wire Airbus A380. We have just completed our FMS preparation and at this point in time we would conduct our departure briefing. Now I do have a dedicated video for the Airbus Smarter Briefing concept which is applied in the A380 just like in any other Airbus which I'm going to link in the video description below so be sure to check that one out. Now, when the briefing is completed, we are going to call for the cockpit preparation checklist. The Airbus A380 has electronic checklists, so down here on the ECAM control panel we can find the checklist button. We're gonna click that one and it pulls up the checklists on our ECAM screen. Now, by default you can see the cockpit preparation checklist is already marked, so by clicking the tick mark down here we can open that checklist. Likewise, we do have the arrow up and arrow down, which we can use to navigate through the different checklists available. So, let's do the cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers, removed, fuel quantity, and for this we open the fuel page, check the fuel distribution and that our fuel loading is balanced, and only then we call out 23,900 kilograms balanced. You can see the seatbelts are already automatically detected by the system and therefore automatically ticked off. So we automatically move on to the next one, which is Barrow Reference, QNH 1021. And that's our cockpit preparation checklist completed, which we can tick off over here, CL completed, and then the checklist just closes itself automatically. All right, with that, we are fully prepared for our pushback. Now. For the pushback, we first of all ensure that all the doors are closed and we ensure that our sliding windows are both closed whoopsie, and lagging as well as we can see over here. Make sure that there are no cables going into there, etc. Now, that one is rather important in the real world since you've got the headset cables hanging around over here, so make sure that there is nothing blocking anything over there. Okay, well. With that completed, we can go ahead and carry out the B4 start procedures. And the flow is rather simple. Basically, you go top to bottom. So, when the pushback clearance is obtained, we ensure the beacon light is turned on. We ensure the sliding window is closed. Select the taxi video camera as needed. Note that this is currently not simulated in the Fly-by-Wire A380. Move down to the brake accumulator. Make sure that the um, pressure is checked, the doors and slides are closed and armed as indicated by the white S next to all the doors. Then we go down to the surveillance panel and over here we select our transponder into auto which turns on the TCAS and thereafter we can go back to the performance. Thrust levers are idle and the parking brake is set. When all of that is checked we can call for the B4 start checklist. So press the checklist button. You will see the cockpit preparation checklist is automatically ticked off already, so the before start checklist is marked automatically. So let's go ahead and select that one. And then we have park and brake, which we verify on the accumulator pressure is set. Takeoff speeds and thrust, V1, 142, VR, 145, V2, 150, flex 66. And we verify those indications on the top of the primary flight display over here as well, with V1 and V2 showing up there. Alright, let's take that one off. You can see the beacon is automatically detected, and with that the before start checklist is complete. Now, this is the time where we would tell our pushback add-on to start the pushback. However, I don't want to use GSX today, but much rather I want to use the pushback functionality that is built into the Flabber Wire Airbus, because they have some really cool stuff over here. So we go to the ground page and then onto pushback, we turn the pushback system on and that is confirmed and we call for a tuck. Now that the tuck is attached, we can go ahead and release our parking brakes. You can see down here we have a little reminder for the parking brake as well. So the parking brake is going off. And now we can start our pushback. Now, what's really cool over here is you've got your aircraft position visible, you've got the entire apron over here, and once we start moving, you also have a line that tells you where you are moving, making it really easy 
to adjust your pushback to end up on the center line. Now, let's quickly check the area behind us to make sure that it is clear. Which it almost is. Good thing we check. There's one Korean 737 inbound over there, but he's turning away. Okay, so we can go ahead and start our pushback. So let's click the backwards tap and we can adjust the tuck speed to something useful. Alright, and then by turning the tuck direction we can make our aircraft move as needed. And normally when aligned to the aircraft you can see that this also brings up the line telling us where we are turning. So this way it is really easy for us to align ourselves properly with the taxiway center line like this. Alright, now that we are pushing back and now that we are clear of any of the roads and any of the features down on the uh, taxiways, let's go ahead and start our engines. Engine start in the Airbus A380 is fairly easy. Number one, we do make sure that the APU bleed is on and the APU is running. Then select the engine start selected to ignition. And hello there, you weren't there a moment ago. Let's clear that traffic. So, engine start selected to ignition and then we can start our engines straight away. Let's also complete our pushback over here. Alright, pushback is completed. Park and brake is set. We can remove the tuck and we can turn off the pushback system. Then we can reselect the taxi charts or whatever chart we would uh, like to see. Alright, so now let's go for the engine start. The engine start selector is on ignition and then we are going to start the engines in sequence 1, 2, 3, 4. Two engines can be started at the same time, so let's go ahead and start engines number 1 and 2. We're going to move the engine master switches into the on position and the rest of the start sequence happens fully automatic. So, as you can see, the N3 is increasing, N2 is increasing, N1 is increasing, and with that our engine start is in progress. The start valve is open, Igniter A has automatically been selected, and now that the engine is injecting fuel, we can see our EGT rising, and we will observe the um, avail indication once the engine start has completed. So we just gotta wait for this one. As soon as the engine start is completed and the engine is available, you will see the thrust gauge fill out in grey and a green avail is going to show. And that is your indication that the engine start has completed and therefore, and therefore the next two engines can be started. So here we go. A veil is showing on engines 1 and 2. Now let's go ahead and start engines 3 and 4. And here we go. 3 and 4 are coming up. Now the engine start sequence itself is fully automated. You don't need to interrupt the sequence. In fact, Airbus tells its pilots not to interrupt the sequence under any circumstances because if anything was wrong, the aircraft would automatically apply corrective action. So, for example, if you have a hot or a hung start, you are going to get an ECAM alert telling you that the engine start has not succeeded, and then the aircraft is going to try it again automatically. And it is going to apply corrective action automatically. Only if the automatic restart attempts fail, the aircraft is going to tell you start failed and will instruct you to turn the engine master switch off and therefore to um, abandon the engine start. Alright, so we have four good starts and with that we can go into the after start flow pattern. We're going to start with a part of flying's action which are all on the overhead panel. So we turn the engine start selected to norm, APU bleed off, anti-ice as needed and APU master switch off. Now anti-ice as needed means Anti engine anti-ice on when we've got visible moisture that can be anything snow, rain, fog and a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or less. Alright, so that's our pilot flying's action. Now comes the pilot monitoring and the pilot monitoring is going to arm the speed brakes, reset the rudder trim, 
select the flaps as needed, and then going to verify and or set the takeoff trim. Now the trim indicator is located down here. In the real aircraft this trims automatically. In the simulated one we have to apply the trim manually. So you can see our takeoff trim setting is marked over here. On the left side you can see the actual setting so we just match the two and be sure that this goes green and matches the predicted um, trim setting. Alright, so here we go, 35.0. Very good, last but not least we check the ECAM status and note that in the absence of any status indication on the um, ECAM this counts as checked, you don't need to open the status page, so you don't need to do this. Okay, very good. Then let's do the afterthought checklist. So, CL, afterthought, anti-ice, off. You can also just read it from here. And that's the afterthought checklist complete. Last but not least, before we start the taxi, we are going to do the flight control track. You can optionally do the flight control track during the taxi as well. However, especially as you are still familiarizing yourself with the aircraft, I would recommend to do the flight control check while the aircraft is stationary. So, let's go full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, and the rudder, full left, full right, neutral. Okay, and with that we are all prepared for taxi. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you liked the video. As always, be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below. Like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.